I'm from a, a desert community of Tucson, Arizona, where we receive 12 inches of rain a year. And as I grew up in that community, I saw how the water resources were steadily depleted over time. We lost the Santa Cruz River, a river that used to run year-round. Uh, it no longer flows except for maybe a day or two after a large storm event. Uh, we have had our groundwater tr table drop over 300 feet since the early 1900s. Um, and we've lost artesian wells and springs that used to be more abundant throughout the, the basin. So, uh, having come from that place and seeing things get worse over time, I did not want to be part of the problem. I wanted to be part of the solution. Uh, I wanted to contribute to the enhancement of my home. Uh, so that it could be the home for others and future generations. Uh, and in this frustration uh, that came up when I became aware of how bad things were and how bad things were getting, I was looking for solutions. And I came upon permaculture, sustainable design strategies, and water harvesting as a component of that. Uh, and I had the opportunity in 1995 to travel to Zimbabwe, or well, Southern Africa and Zimbabwe. And there I met uh, a subsistence farmer, Mr. Zephania Pirimaseko, who had um, turned a wasteland into an oasis. And he had taught himself how to do it just by watching when it rained and seeing where the rain gathered, accumulated, and where it generated more life, and where it flashed out too quick and caused erosion. And so he built on those successes he saw in the natural patterns and he changed that which wasn't working. Uh, and over time created this relative oasis. And he was a huge inspiration for me, uh, in large part because uh, after my visit with him, uh, I told him how bad the water situation was in my hometown of Tucson and how I didn't want to be part of the problem. And so I was thinking of leaving. And he said, you can't leave. He said, you have to go back home and you have to set your roots and you have to find solutions. Because if you leave now, wherever you go, you will take your problems with you and you'll just plant more problems. But if you can instead find a solution to these problems, then once you've done that, you choose. You can stay or go. Because wherever you go from that point on, you'll be planting solutions, not problems. Sounded really good. So I, uh, I came back with that intent. Um, and ever since, I've been experimenting, going to study from others who are harvesting water in different contexts, reading all I could. Um, and yeah, it's just ever evolving that way. Well, I think uh, we need to take care of our home. And our home is this planet. Uh, our more immediate home is, is our home in whatever ecosystem we find ourselves in. Uh, and I think the more we can live in balance with uh, the natural system, the more it will do the work, the less work we have to do. Uh, and I think we need to uh, strive to do things in such a way that the natural re resource base is at worst uh, maintained but at best, steadily enhanced. That way, if the uh, food distribution system goes down, hey, it's okay. Um, we've got food locally. Uh, if the water system goes down, it's okay. We still have springs. We still have a high enough water table we can access with just a hand dug well. Um, it's, it's building in resiliency into the system. So whatever happens, be it a temporary power outage, uh, be it more uh, large-scale changes with global climate change, um, I think it's important to have a resource base that we can fall back on and, and work with. Uh, and it, it's just a lot more fun and dynamic that way. I mean, I'd much rather go swim in a natural swimming hole uh, full of salamanders and you know, great fish then go to a uh, you know, municipal pool full of chemicals and I come out and I kind of feel sticky and all instead of just really revived. Um, and I'm not going to drink from a community pool, but I'll drink from a swimming hole.
I think we need to be taking better care of our water resources um, because it's, it's not infinite. Um, so uh, less than 3% of all the water on this planet is fresh water, drinking water. And actually most of that drinking water is frozen or very deep within the earth and, and not accessible to us. Uh, so we're left with more like 1% of the world's water available to us in a drinking form. Um, and unfortunately, we've so degraded uh, what we have of that 1% that there's even far less. For example, in my state of Arizona, over 90% of the fresh waterways are gone. Um, in just 100 years, we have wiped out over 90%. Um, my, my hometown of Tucson, the, the groundwater table has dropped over 300 feet since the early 1900s and it becomes more and more saline the deeper we drop it and harder to access. So uh, we, we are creating a scarcity out of what was an abundance. Uh, so if we can turn this path around and actually start taking strategies in our own lives and our communities that start to enhance it, well, things can be better for us now and for future generations, but not just people, but uh, just you know, for the wildlife as well. We can get more diversity uh, out in the world, which does come back to us and helps us. Um, we, we may tap into certain plants for their medicinal uses that we're not currently tapping um, and, and, and other means like as such. Uh, rainwater harvesting means capturing and utilizing the rain as close as possible to where it falls. So we're not talking about the Hoover Dam, okay? Because that water has been, has been caught many hundreds of miles from where the rain first hit the soil, okay? Uh, so for me, rainwater harvesting can be collecting water that comes off a roof into a roofside tank. We can use that water for drinking, for bathing, uh, cooking, or for irrigating our kitchen vegetable garden. Uh, and we have this feedback loop. We're connected. We see where the water comes from, where it goes. Uh, if we don't want a tank, we could create water harvesting earthworks, creating a level bottom bowl-like shape uh, in a flatter landscape, mulch it and plant it. So if there's any surplus water, it goes into that area and infiltrates instead of flowing off. And this way we are, uh, in a sense, we're planting the rain. And then we're accessing that rain with the vegetation that pumps it back up via its roots. So we enjoy the water in the form of food, shelter, passively cooling shade, windbreaks, uh, erosion control, wildlife habitat, beauty, and so on. And uh, I find it so much more dynamic uh, if we are using local free water that falls from the sky. It's the highest quality irrigation source uh, or water for irrigation. And uh, there's no bill. I, I have yet to get a bill for uh, the harvested wa rainwater I use. Uh, and I love that because the less I have to pay bills, the less I have to work, the more fun I can have, the more trees I can plant and in water harvesting earthworks. And then the more fruit not quite ripe, but when it gets ripe, the more fruit I can harvest from the tree, such as this banana here. <laughs>